Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and welcome back to another edition of Foundation Fridays for Over 50s in which I am searching the world over for a wonderful, fabulous, holy grail foundation that works on mature skin. And if you've been watching the series, you know that this is not easy to come by. So this is the fifth video in the series and today we're going to be taking a look at Makeup Forever HD Invisible Cover Foundation. Now this retails for $43 for one ounce and it comes in 26 different shades. According to the Makeup Forever website, this is an oil-free medium coverage foundation that covers skin imperfections flawlessly while remaining invisible even under the most magnifying HD lens. And they also promise that this foundation creates a soft focus effect, which is designed to meet the coverage concerns of those in the spotlight. It leaves your complexion with such a flawless finish that it can withstand bright and harsh lighting. So those are some pretty big claims and I'm gonna put it to the test today and find out if it does those things and more and if it will become the holy grail foundation that we have all been looking for. Rather than purchasing this one, I picked up a sample of it at Sephora. So they give you a nice little container full of it. I picked it up in the color N130, which is Warm Ivory. Let me swatch it for you. I felt like when I first put it on, it seemed a little light for me, but then it kind of darkened up as the day went on. So at first it seemed too light, then it seemed to normalize, then it seemed to get a little bit darker. So the color definitely kind of adjusts as the day goes on. This is an oil-free water-based formula that doesn't rely heavily on silicones and it doesn't contain sunscreen or any anti-aging ingredients which is fine because as you know I put my sunscreen on underneath um, between my skincare and my makeup goes my sunscreen every day. I give it the 15 to 20 minutes to set up and then it doesn't interfere, interfere with the application of my makeup. It's supposed to be a moisturizing formula. It has this um, yeast extract in it that has been shown to improve the lipid barrier function on the surface of the skin. But it also contains a little bit of mica, super fine grain mica, and that is supposed to not only give it the radiance, but also kind of diffuse the light to soften uh, whatever imperfections there are on the skin. So that is what the marketing claims it's going to do. Let's find out what it actually did on my mature skin. So just to let you know, I applied this four different times. For day one, I decided to try to apply it with a flat foundation brush. I went on their website and I watched their video on how they applied it and this was the recommended method, so that's what I tried first. I used a pore minimizing primer on one side of my face and no primer on the other side. As you can see in the video, I dotted it around my face and then used the flat brush to spread it around. This resulted in a medium coverage that didn't need any concealer. Uh, looking at it from a, a distance in my regular mirror, it had a nice skin-like finish that was not too matte and not too shiny. Uh, it wasn't particularly smoothing and didn't do anything to make my pores or wrinkles look better. So contrary to its claims, it didn't cover my skin imperfections flawlessly, um, nor did it remain invisible. <laughs> On this day, I did not use a setting powder or a setting spray because I wanted to see how long it would last on its own. Here is uh, the side-by-side -side comparison of my skin before and just after applying it. go ahead and put on some bronzer blush and finishing powder for this little bit of shine under my eyes and then I'll come back and show you what the whole thing looks like. And here are the close-up pictures. Here's the side with the primer and the side without the primer. All right, and as usual, I came back after four hours and eight hours to see how the wear was. After four hours, it had settled into my pores and my wrinkles. So I had the white polka dot uh, skin going on in my pores. I had foundation in my wrinkles. This was definitely making me look older and um, not so good. But it wasn't really terribly worn off by then, so the coverage still looked okay. 
by eight hours it was much shinier and wearing off so it probably started wearing off somewhere in between around the six hour mark and getting shiny at around the same time it had a strange way of sitting in some areas especially my chin where it had like what i'm going to call a micro spotting effect so on the surface there were these little tiny polka dots that you could see i'm guessing those are the mica flakes <laughs> um, so day one was not a huge success but I always like to give it another couple of tries, so let's move on to day two and I'll show you what happened there. On day two, I applied the foundation using a damp blending sponge and no primer. This resulted in a sheer coverage that needed concealer and finishing powder. So I went off camera and did uh, put on the concealer, put on blush and bronzer, and then put finishing powder on my T-zone and under my eyes. It looked really nice applied with the sponge. It seemed to be a little bit smoother, did slightly better things for my pores, uh, but still didn't do anything for my wrinkles. At the four hour check-in, it looked pretty much fine and pretty much the same as it had before. But by the eight hour check-in, it was much shinier and wearing off again. So somewhere between four and eight hours, probably around six, it starts to deteriorate. I had that micro spotting on my chin and it had settled into my pores again. All right, so not great on day two again. So on day three, what I decided was that I wanted to really try to make it last longer by adding all the other products. I'm just gonna throw them all at it and see if I can get it to last a little longer. And also I wanted to use a little bit more of it and see if I could build it up to a solid medium coverage where maybe you wouldn't need concealer. Uh, not because that's how I like to wear my makeup, but because that is how some people do like to wear their makeup and they like to know if it's buildable. So on this day, I prepped skin with a water-based primer that was the Tarte Clean Slate Flawless 12-Hour Brightening Primer. And then I applied the foundation with my fingers because I'm always looking for something that I can just put on with my fingers and have it go. I thought the primer would help it to um, spread easier with the fingers, but au contraire, Pierre, it did not. Um, it didn't go on great with the fingers, so I did the building it up to medium part using a domed kabuki brush. Uh, it took a little work to blend it out nicely, and there were a couple of problem areas, but the coverage is definitely buildable so that no additional concealer is needed. To try to get it to last past the six hour mark, I used a setting powder, which was the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores HD powder, as well as a setting spray, which was the e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. So let's take a look at the before and the immediately after on this one and see how it looked at a fuller coverage. And here is what the close-ups were at fuller coverage. So at full coverage, it does settle into wrinkles and pores immediately. Uh, whereas the other ways, when you put it on more sheer, it takes it a couple hours before it settles into your wrinkles and pores. <laughs> but you know how much I love settling into wrinkles and pores, so if it does it at all, I am not getting it. So I did wear it all day as usual. I came back at the 4 hour mark, the 8 hour mark, and the 12 hour mark. So here is what it looked like after 4 hours. And here it is at the eight hour check-in. And again at the 12 hour check-in. All right, so on day three, I feel like a lot of the problems were caused by the primer, which means that I had to wear it for a fourth day and try yet another primer. So I had to take my daughter to the mall anyway, and while I was there, I stopped in at Sephora, and I decided to get the Makeup Forever primer. They've reformulated their primer. They've come out with nine different ones. So whatever your skin problem is, their primer is supposed to help you with it. I picked the one that was the smoothing primer, right? <laughs> I want everything to be smooth. Day four. Today, I'm wearing it 
against my better judgment, <laughs> I got a nice new sample of the makeup. I was going to switch colors, but I ended up with the same color anyway, so that I have a nice new sample in case this was a new formulation and that, and that old sample was the old formulation. Let me bring in the footage to show you. Here's me putting on the brand new Makeup Forever Primer. Here's me putting on the new sample of the Makeup Forever Invisible Cover HD Foundation with the brand new blending sponge, using it sparingly, being careful to avoid my under eye wrinkles. It immediately settled into the same forehead wrinkles that I had a problem with the other day. It did nothing for my pores, so I can't blame any of that on the other primers, the other applications, the fingers, the brushes, or anything else. I'm back on the fourth day for a five-hour check-in. My nose is starting to wear off as well as my chin is a little pink. Um, so yeah, this primer does not seem to help with the wear on this either. It's the eight hour check in. Here's the 12 hour check in. There's really nothing new or different since um, eight hours, except that it's a little more worn off um, and slightly more shiny. So that wraps it up for Makeup Forever HD Foundation. It's a disappointing little experiment, but at least I can put this one to bed and put me to bed. So, night night, everybody. Let's go ahead with the last two tests that I do, which are the phone test, fail on the phone test, and the flash photography. All right, to take it point by point of the things that you guys are interested in knowing about each foundation, let's start with the coverage. It is a sheer coverage foundation that, if you care to build it up, can become a medium coverage foundation. It does not cover skin imperfections flawlessly, and it doesn't remain invisible. It actually accentuates skin imperfections like wrinkles, pores, spots, and hairs. It is a fail in the coverage area. For the finish, the finish is on the dewy side, so I like to powder it over with a mattifying powder, especially under my eyes, and that helps it a lot. I do have to powder in my T-zone because it does get shiny in the afternoon. The, what starts off as dewy becomes shiny and accentuates every pore and wrinkle on your face. For the wrinkles, it settles right into them. Isn't that what everybody loves with their wrinkles? So you cannot use it wherever you have wrinkles. The best thing I can say about the wear is that at least it's consistent from day to day. It crashes and burns at six hours, no matter what you do to it. This does look good under the video lights and on camera. Most people aren't lit when they're walking around the world, so you know, it's, it's a fail in real life. But if you are on camera or if you are you know, a YouTuber, you might want to get it just to use for YouTube. I usually try to give a nice, fair, and balanced review and tell you what the good points are and what the bad points are. But today, I am so frustrated with this. I usually try to say who this could be good for if there were reasons that I didn't like it. I can't even think of anyone that this would be good for. I don't recommend this for anyone who has an age spot, a wrinkle, a pore. I think it doesn't look good, ever. I think it's just weird. And so the search continues. So that is my complete and full review on Makeup Forever HD Invisible Cover Foundation. As always, everybody, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. And I always thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. And I hope that you have a great weekend, everybody. Take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Ah. <sighs>